so team keep it clean like where, where do we even start after everything from yesterday and you know I, I wanted to talk about it yesterday but then i was like you know what i need a break I, I need a break from everything from yesterday even though we freelance and we still got to take breaks we still got to pace ourselves but then i figured everybody else needed a break to collectively gather their thoughts on all the um all the events that took place yesterday um because it was just crazy it was crazy and the craziest part wasn't even that the baltimore ravens used the non-exclusive tag on lamar as crazy as that is, as risky as, as that is, that wasn't even the craziest thing that happened yesterday. But let's briefly go over that. Of course, they did use the non-exclusive tag. So that allows Lamar Jackson to negotiate with other teams, come up with a price, uh, uh, come up with a uh, salary, come up with a contract with other teams. And the Ravens have the opportunity to either match it or to not match it. If they match it, they keep Lamar Jackson. If they don't match it, they get two first-round picks from whatever team it is. Now, whichever team it is, they have to have a first-round pick this year and next year. If they don't have a first-round pick this year, they cannot sign him to an offer sheet until after the draft. Um, Robert Griffin, RG3, uh, he brought up something that he was apparently leaked from the Ravens. Uh, good timing, huh? But anyway, he said, from a team source, the Ravens hope negotiating with other teams will give them and Lamar an unbiased look at the market for him. Ravens aren't reluctant to give Lamar a top QB market deal, but hope the non-exclusive franchise tag will speed up their own stalled negotiations with him and yeah that makes sense because Ravens been trying to sign him to whatever it, they have been and Lamar obviously ain't been going for it because there's no deal yet so now you can get other teams involved to see what other teams interest in Lamar and what other teams would be willing to sign him for but but now hold up there buddy but wait a minute there buddy because yesterday a lot of teams coincidentally started dropping out of the Lamar Jackson race. And you know what was funny when whenever you um if you watch a certain genre of television or entertainment or really anything, if you find yourself uh learning about a certain subject or topic something that interests you. Over time, uh, if you are learning about whatever that subject is, you're going to learn certain words that you may not learn if you are interested in something different. Like yesterday, uh, a lot of people were learning the word. And I mean, we've heard it plenty of times before, but yesterday was a, a big day for the word collusion. Collusion. And looking up the definition of collusion, it says secret or illegal cooperation or conspiracy, conspiracy especially in order to cheat or deceive others and another version of it is illegal cooperation or conspiracy conspiracy especially between ostensible opponents in a lawsuit so um a lot of people were throwing out the word collusion yesterday when coincidentally after it was announced that the baltimore ravens uh, were franchise tagging lamar jackson which was and you know what was weird too i thought it was I, Hey, maybe uh, I'm not sure if they did this before or not, but I felt like it was weird that the Ravens just announced, hey, we're franchise tagging Lamar Jackson. They didn't announce which type of tag it was. And I know that's like that's something that they strategically do or strategically did. But anyway, um, it was weird because right after the Ravens announced they were franchise tagging Lamar Jackson, then all these teams coincidentally out of out of nowhere. They start saying, or all these reports start coming out that these teams are not interested or they won't be pursuing Lamar Jackson. Uh, it was the Falcons. It was the Dolphins. It was the Panthers. It was the Commanders. And it was the Raiders. Even though there's been a report uh, from Diana Rossini that came out a little bit later after that that said the Raiders actually uh, may like look into Lamar Jackson. Or maybe they're, they're going to explore all their QB options, something like that. But anyway, it was just weird. And you know, like, Obviously, we, we, we know owners talk. We know owners talk. And we, we already know, like, Steve Bashotti Ben came out and said it, like, that he ain't want to do no fully guaranteed deal, that that's not what he trying to do. Um, but, you know, so many of the owners were so heated at Jimmy Haslam and them uh, over in Cleveland for giving that to Deshaun Watson. Um, but he still got it. He got it. Amidst all the allegations Amidst not even playing football for like a year and a half, two years, he still got it. And now when Lamar Jackson, who has been playing football for the past five years, 
he gets franchise tag, the non um exclusive franchise tag, all these teams are just coincidentally just dropping out. It's like, come on now. We 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 see what it is. It, it, it's it's the game. And it's a nasty game. It's a dirty game. We always talk about that. How the NFL is a nasty game. Nasty one. So right now it's like it's Lamar Jackson versus the world. It's Lamar Jackson versus the world. And you know, like Ravens are so happy right now. It's so happy. And it's almost like a bittersweet thing because we want the Ravens to keep Lamar for sure. But I ain't really want it to happen this way in, in a sort of nasty way to where is it? Because, you know, you know, Steve Bichette and all them owners talk. They talk. They're owners. They're owners. They're all owners of, of NFL teams. So, of course, they talk. It's like they in their own little club or whatnot. But this whole this whole thing, allegedly, it's just it's it's, it's crazy. But it's, it seems like it's definitely some funny business going on. Um, because for team for teams actually like right, right after he gets tagged, right after it, to come out and, and and start and start saying that, and them all them reports just start dropping. It's like hmm, okay. And these are teams that don't have quarterbacks. Like one of them, though, like the Dolphins, they got Tua. And then shout out to Tua. Tua's cool. But the Falcons, they ain't got no quarterback. What, Desmond Ritter? They ain't got that quarterback. Uh, the Panthers, they ain't got that quarterback. Uh, the Commanders, they ain't got that quarterback. The Raiders, they just cut their quarterback. So it's like, really? Now, of course, over time, Stuff could change Situations change um, And like my guy uh, Sam Najoku Continuously said it All it takes is one team All it takes is one team uh, One team that's willing to sort of buck the system uh, One team that's willing to go against the grain uh, And one team that's just willing to be like You know what We'll, we'll take them we, We're gonna go for it So but it, it was just crazy man And I wonder what was going on in Lamar's head right now. Because, again, it, it is him versus the world. And, and we know um, the NFLPA, they've been involved heavy with Lamar. They've been involved really, really heavy with Lamar. But, obviously, the owners, they've been involved with each other. And the owners, they're powerful. And they want to make sure, like, this whole guaranteed contract thing, no, that it does not go down. They, they, they do not want it to be the norm They don't want it to be regular They do not want it to be consistent They want it to be anomalies When fully guaranteed contracts happen Why? Because that's more money Literally more money out of their pockets Even though they got a lot of money These players make them a lot of money But it's more money out of their pockets and They don't want to do that Another thing too with Lamar Jackson that they don't want to become the norm either on top of the fully guaranteed contract is a fully guaranteed contract something of this magnitude with no agent because Lamar Jackson um, he can and he still has an opportunity too but he's being a pioneer right now a pioneer that a lot of agents a lot of NFL owners just they don't want him to be a pioneer for that. They don't want him to inspire the, like players to not have agents because that's taking money out of their pockets. Like that's that that's their bread. They like hey, hold up now, wait a minute, don't don't do that. So it's just it's crazy, man. But again, it's the game. It's the game. So we're gonna see how everything ends up playing itself out. We gotta see, and I don't know, man. It's just. It's like now again. It, now it looks like the Ravens will keep Lamar. Um, looks like they'll hold on to him. Which again, like I said, it, it would be a great thing. But just how it's being gone about, it's just it's just fishy. It's real fishy. And one of the craziest parts about it is that nobody can really do anything about it. Though owners are so powerful. Nobody can do anything about it. Well, at least I, I can't think of anything that anybody can do to really like. Because, again, player versus owners. Like, it's pretty much Lamar Jackson versus 
31 other owners Because excluding the Browns Because they the ones that, that started it Well actually the Vikings Because they gave Kirk Cousins a fully guarantee But that's not the one that everybody's looking at Everybody's obviously looking at Deshaun Watson So It's tough It's really tough it's, And it's, it's just a situation that's just It's crazy But um Anyway, uh, back to the non-exclusive tag. Um, I know this has been seen as sort of a Ravens. Initially, when they put the non-exclusive tag on them, uh, a lot of people felt like it was the Ravens just showing that confidence. Like, hey, anything that anybody offers him, we can match it. We can do it. We can make it happen. We can give him the best offer. But go ahead, talk to other teams. But it's like the Ravens have already talked to other teams. And being like, no, 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 don't, don't do it, don't do it, because again, all the the backing out, coincidentally, right after he's franchised, uh, yeah. But anyway, um, we'll see how the whole thing ends up playing out. Brian McFarlane, our uh, Ravens salary cap, who always keeps us up to date with everything going on with the uh, the Ravens salary cap, which we appreciate. Shout out to Brian McFarlane. Um, he said that with the non-exclusive tag. Uh, this puts the Ravens nine mil over the cap. Um, <clears throat> now, a couple of things with that. By March 15th, the starter free agency, the Ravens have to be under the cap. So what that means is that you will be seeing <laughs> a lot of this freelancer over the next week because the Ravens need to make moves to get under the salary cap. If you're over, you, you, you cannot be over the salary cap heading into free agency. When free agency starts, when the new league year begins, you have to be under the salary cap. You have to. It's a requirement. Now, after the league year begins, you can do whatever. and you can, you can be over the salary cap. But when it starts, you got to be under. You have to. So that means the Ravens, they have some moves to make. And what I appreciate about Brian McFarlane, um, he lets it be known like uh, some different suggestions, well, not suggestions, some different options that the Ravens have as far as getting under the salary cap. Um, some of the potential moves that he listed uh, were <laughs> signing Lamar Jackson to an extension. Well, that ain't going to happen yet. Um, but restructuring Ronnie Stanley again. Uh, how much time we don't restructure Ronnie Stanley? It had to be like, I feel like it's been like six. Uh, it probably ain't been that much, but maybe like four. Uh, maybe four, but it, it's been a lot. I feel like that that would always be like with the first contract they go to restructure Ronnie Stanley. Uh, it used to be Brandon Williams. Y'all remember it would always be Brandon Williams. They would always be restructuring Brandon Williams. Um, but anyway, uh, they can restructure Ronnie Stanley, restructure Marlon Humphrey, uh, trade or release Calais Campbell. Even though you know if whatever they do, they're gonna bring him back. Well, not if they trade him, but they ain't trading him. If they release, they they gonna bring him back. But anyway, um, restructure Mark Andrews, trade or release Gus Edwards. Trade or release Devin Duvernay. Trade or release Chuck Clark. Restructure Roquan. Uh, sign Kevin Zeiler to an extension. Uh, restructure Tyus Bowser, Makari, Morgan Moses, Michael Pierce. Uh, or release Michael Pierce. Uh, or release Patrick Ricard. Whoa. Now that's a sneaky one right there. Especially because with Todd Munkin, when he spoke, he was talking about how fullbacks are dying. For like the the league don't got nearly as many fullbacks as they used to have, and he talked about like he sort of gave a little jab to Greg Roman, uh, talking about a fullback being uh being like matched up with a linebacker or something like that, and having to be a weapon. And anyway, so we'll see, we'll see. But the bottom line is the Ravens they have to make some corresponding moves to get under the salary cap by what is it next Tuesday? I think it's next Tuesday. But yeah, so, oh no, the 15th is next Wednesday because today's the 8th. So yeah, they, they, they got to make some moves to get under the salary cap uh, within a week. So yeah, it's time to get shaken. Now, back to Lamar Jackson real quick. Um, with Lamar Jackson, he can begin negotiating with other teams in a week. Once the, uh, the new league year opens, that's when he can start talking to other teams that are potentially interested in him and we'll see again what what which team is going to be that ends up going against the grain um because again all this the public like hey we know we're not interested we're not going to pursue lamar jackson even the atlanta falcons retweeting the report 
I said, whoa, ho, ho, okay, Atlanta Falcons social media team. Let us know how you feel. Apparently they did, but um, next week, that's when Lamar can start talking to people. So, yeah, again, now uh, it is nice to be in the next step of whatever's going to happen. Um, but we still we still got a little bit of a ways to go. So, But anyway, team, keep it clean. I appreciate y'all. I love y'all. I always appreciate you all listening. I thank you all for supporting this freelancer. <laughs> hopefully, we're just a temporary freelancer. But, hey, everything will hopefully eventually work itself out uh, very soon. Now, like we said, the end of March is big for us because that's when hopefully – um we when we do reapply uh to be monetized again hopefully it can be approved um and we can just get back to normal but i i appreciate y'all still supporting like crazy and just showing a lot of love i i, I really do so thank you i love y'all and we out